Uh, the first remark I should make is that no one should think that uh, things were much different at the time. If you like what's happening these days, especially at election time, um, is no different from, let's say, the immediate post-independence and some years afterwards. Um, it was um, politics by thuggery. Uh, and all this taking place uh, in the midst of a pretense democracy um, and supposed to be a, a federal uh, constitution, federal political dispensation. Uh, on the one hand, there was what I considered very healthy rivalry between the various uh, regions. Uh, so there was progress because it was creative rivalry. But side by side, of course, as with all good things, there were the negatives. And it was in this atmosphere that um, uh, the guerrilla theater was born. I extracted the small, shall we say, combat troop from the larger and more sort of uh, methodical 1960 masks, the Perrin Company, and we did all kinds of sketches. And let me stress this, the, the sketches uh, that we performed at the time, especially the blackout sketches, before the blackout, uh, and then all kind of variations of the blackout. Uh, those sketches were uh, directed not just against the state, the government, but even against the people themselves, because very often, we all know this, till today, the people are very much, sometimes, very often in fact, their own worst enemy. They lay themselves open to be raped, if you like, by power. So those sketches, you know, like the Aesthetical Revolution, uh, if you listen very carefully, that record is not uh, alone, it's not simply against power, it's also a statement to the polity, look out for themselves. But I made an earlier remark, I said pretense democracy, pretense federalism, and this, now we come to using music as an instrument of, uh, of combat. You had a situation where, under a democracy, a federal constitution, the center was closing down radio stations and even the one or two censoring uh, television station, which was just coming out for quote unquote Western Africa at the time. We're talking actually about like. Lagos TV being shut down, OG TV being shut down by federal might simply because uh, that uh, region was uh, under the opposition, which of course permitted critical voices, uh, statements, commentary, propositions against the state government. And so you actually had the entire stations, regional stations been closed down, so that you had to look for stations which were sympathetic to whatever you were doing, and which were ready to take the risk uh, of incurring the power, the ire of federal might. Now, uh, I'd always stress that uh, it's a pity that uh, people don't pay much attention to oral statements. In other words, you don't actually have to stage a play to make a point. I mean, it is important because in the theater is a totally different medium. You involve the people themselves, you energize them more readily. But if all that else, if all else fails, <clears throat> the uh, waxing, I think that's the expression, the record, is one way of penetrating through, of uh, overcoming government scripture, uh, strictures. Uh, you just pass your record round. And so we evolved from the very beginning uh, the musical medium as a language of combat, a spot and parcel of guerrilla uh, attack. Um, you could, uh, we were set up, I mean, the Oriston Theatre was my main vehicle at the time, which I extracted from the parent body, I just said, the masks. And we just um, if something had taken place, which is untoward, the next thing you'll find that guerrilla theater, that unit, outside the House of Representatives at uh, Onikon, uh, during the riot scandal, for instance, 
and they have set up camp, perform, and before the thugs of the federal might arrived to scatter them, they have already scattered themselves. And they were performing marketplaces in front of the secretariat. Uh, all the kinds of scandals which have never left us, which we're witnessing today. Uh, like, for instance, it, it strikes me that uh, the qualification to become president of Senate today seems to be the qualification, seems to be you have to have beyond us some kind of criminal cloud. So nothing really has changed. I mean, the last two presidents of Senate, I think some of them, I mean, they, 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 they both, and they, as well as a number of legislators, of course, they have cases to answer. So to ask myself, has anything really changed? Uh, isn't it time for a resumption of that spirit of the guerrilla theater, of which the new musical version is a very strong, strike, effective uh, you know, unit to penetrate into the consciousness of people. And not just as an instrument of government criticism, but as an instrument, an invitation to the polity itself to ask itself questions, to ask why criminals go back to their hometowns and uh, having been rumbled after a long time, they need to quit the position, but they get to their hometowns and villages. Big reception, cows, and chieftaincy title, especially, of which we are so fond, as a thank you for messing up the people, you know, for robbing the people blind. Uh, a season of uh, diamond uh, uh, braziers, diamond studded braziers. Every day, a new summanting scandal. Until you just get exhausted. And you say, what on earth can you do? But something which can be done is making sure there's a permanent vehicle of criticism, uh, of awareness, of public conscientization. And the best medium of that is um, music. Uh, if a fraction of what I know exists on television today. Each time I turn on the news, somebody is dancing there. I can't even decide whether it's athletics they're doing or there's dancing and so on all over the place. You know. If a fraction of that is used really to express public discontent, I don't just mean cheap, easy sloganeering. I mean, the kind of cases which we described in um, ethical revolution in which we refer to. Yeah, this is a kind of uh, lyric that a, a society like ours need as a constant. And it's not original. Well, Hubert Ogunde, for instance, let's go let's go back a little bit. Hubert Ogunde was one of the greatest social critics through music. And when he was banned, he resorted to music, he resorted to records. It happened in this particular case, uh, directed mostly at one of the ethnic groups, Yoruba, Runu, and so on. But that was not the first time. Hubert Ogunde, for instance, uh, during the British colonial period, he was also banned then. Uh, he put set uh, events to music, strikes, the coal man strikes, of, uh, uh, the, the coal workers, miners uh, strike of Enugu, women's uh, rebellion, I mean, he, he used those, those are real treasures of social commitment, social activism. So that medium is always there. And as I said, it doesn't have to be images. We carry this over, for instance, into what, uh, into an instrument of uh, combat against that uh, monster called Sonia Bata, when he started monopolizing the uh, airwaves and controlling the media you know, to such an extent that uh, uh, even <laughs> it was uh, not economic sense to set up your own newspapers because you were just closed down at will. Uh, and not just, uh, even before then, I, I believe that even under Babangida, once the Concord was totally closed down, was it under, no, let, me, let me very careful here, there's so many acts of uh, censorship that one, one thing spills into the other. But anyway, let's just say that during the military dictatorship, 
uh, and when communication was totally controlled by powers, that is when we said, well, let's penetrate through by setting up radio, first of all, Radio Democrat, and then which was renamed Radio Democracy. And we had this mobile here, right under Bacha's nose. We had this mobile unit going from place to place, so it could not be tracked down. After broadcasting here, yeah, dismantled, put, put inside a, a vehicle, it reappears broadcasting several miles. And we had uh, released with uh, uh, Reporters Sans Frontières, that's Reporters Without Frontiers, who actually gave us some equipment. I think we even have one still sitting in some uh, in an apartment building in Paris, which we never took possession of, uh, because then, just by that time, when we were about to expand, uh, Abata very kindly took his leave and departed to the uh, eternal broadcasting station, where he can, he can go and censor communication as much as he wanted. But that thing is still there. I'm, I've just remembered it. One of these days, I go look for it. And it might come in useful. You never know. So, the, I was inspired, actually, by the aura thing through my hunting forays uh, in the forest. And uh, that was when the herdsmen behaved like decent social beings, not carrying AK-47s. And we used to be friends with them in the bush when we went hunting. And sometimes when you got lost, all you did was just listen to where a radio transmitter was coming from because they had radio transmitters they used to listen to their music and their whatever and so we just went along the path until you found either a small settlement or a small uh, procession of cows and you found your way from there and i was impressed when i was in the forest about how these people were to keep in touch and uh, and sort of feel part of the rest of us just by those transmitter radios. And so when about our sister began clamping down everything, that became my priority personally, and also the priority of those with whom we are associated. So it's, uh, there's nothing mysterious uh, about it. Uh, ethical revolution, of course, was born out of a real sense of outrage. Outrage. I mean, arson was commonplace. The moment there was any exam, any kind of audit going on in any building, up it went in flames, magically. The military just as bad, if not worse than the rest. Sometimes the military even prevented the fire brigade from putting out fires. This happened in Lagos, I think it happened in Kano also, simply because they didn't want to be audited. There were also things like um, uh, rumbling of, shall we say, marijuana. I remember that distinctly. We bags of marijuana were stored in one of the buildings in, not far from the race course, the present Tohaba Dale Square. And um, this was evidence of, of some kind of criminality. The next thing you knew, up in flames. And so, one of the designs, if you remember, on the original sleeve of the record was a caricature of somebody who was also a legal luminary carrying the Olympic torch, but racing to go and set fire to the next, the next target. It was that kind of atmosphere. I don't know if it was um, any more dangerous than here, but believe me, it is also then at present uh, on the military and the which other. There was also an element of, uh, of risk, but the artists were just uh, indifferent to whatever the government would have to throw at them, or indeed the opposition within the polity itself. You know, those who disagreed with their own uh, policy. So it's a constant battle for the airwaves. Uh, it's a pity, great pity, I will end on this note, that that facility, which has now been augmented by modern technology, 
is being debased and degraded by the mindless and really illiterate and vile-minded people. I'm talking about the internet, which has become a free-for-all for all kinds of mindless, often submental types. Be the first to comment. That should be the title of today's communication of resistance. Not to think, not to hold normal discourse, not to propagate the genuine progressive ideas, but just be the first to comment. That should be the title of the next social activist record. As a matter of fact, there were supposed to be two discs. Well, the other one, which is even more combative, was called Take the First Step. And I remember it was uh, performed uh, and also recorded by Jimmy Sholanka. I remember that very well. Um, and we recorded it in uh, old GTV studio just before it was closed down by the powers that be at the time. And this was a real marching mobilization um, uh, beat tempo, you know, it really was very martial. It was deliberate. And we performed it just once uh, before OGTV was closed down. Uh, one we did in Radio Benin at the time. I can't remember what the name was, but it was in Edo, Edo State. Uh, another attempt to record. But in this particular case, the Ethical Re Revolution, I can't remember who it was who discovered this studio, which was willing to take the risk. Uh, it was like uh, getting ready with 24-hour notice. It had to be just that one day. Oregon studio was where we recorded it. And uh, with whatever they would quick, 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 finish and get out of there because the government, you know, was aware of what was happening. And um, uh, we, it, it was guerrilla warfare, if you like, as far as communication was concerned. And the one in Lagos you're referring to, which I remember vaguely, glad you reminded me of it, I can't, um, it was very, um, I, 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 the picture, the image is coming slowly to mind. I'd forgotten all about it. But the one which I do remember most, um, most vividly, because uh, that was pretty close. That was in um, uh, Oyo State, Ibadan, not the OGTV, the other uh, station, uh, in which I was actually cut off. It was doing a program and, uh, with an audience in the studio. And... Um, I think it was this same Adedibu at the time, uh, who, together with the governor at the time, he was, we discovered he was in the governor's lodge when he, this king of thugs, gave orders that I should be shut up, you know, shut up on television. There I was, perorating away, you know, and uh, not knowing what was going on around me, but somehow somebody. Uh, managed to get a note across to me uh, in, the, um, in the podium there uh, and said, you've been cut off. Please get out of the studio as fast as you can. The studio was already surrounded by this man's thugs. Well, we didn't exactly go unprepared either. Um, it was a question of changing gear. And, uh, but then this man was bringing reinforcements into the studio. Uh, and then a far more urgent message seems, look, just come through this door. I know how to guide you all out. <laughs> and, uh, and so we, we beat a hasty retreat on that day, leaving, uh, and by the time they got there, we disappeared completely. Well, it was that kind of, um, the artists at the time weren't just trained to be musicians, they were also trained to be survivors. Let me just put it that way. Oh yes, oh definitely. Well, the recording, it's, it wasn't so easy at the time. Every camera is a recorder these days. 
Some sometimes I think that even people their rings I look at them because they might have recording equipment, so things are much easier. At that time, you just had to make tapes. You had to make tapes and pass them on by hand, sneak them uh, across the body. Of course, you don't use the labels uh, to advertise what exactly they were. Uh, but we just outwitted the security officers. And I always remember this. Government is never monolithic. There are always those who are obliged to work for an oppressive state. But who, whose minds, whose hearts, whose heads are in totally different directions. And uh, we owe a lot to them, including our lives to some of them. Yes, there's no question at all about that. It's very difficult for me to... I have a feeling that uh, maybe because... Uh, my mind is on the Soviet Union these days, especially under this uh, this, this animal called but Putin. Yeah. Uh, that maybe the stars are about the Russian astronauts flying in space radio the message to their Moscow base. <laughs> and also the fact that I have always been obsessed about the filth that surrounds. So for some reason till today, we are unable really to deal with filth, with garbage. Garbage is a normal product of society. So it should be part and parcel of the creative strategies of governments, all the way down to local government, all the way down to the ordinary citizen with a sense of responsibility to his or her own community. So I think that, because that sort of, uh, for me, signals a depressing aspect of what you might call the soul of a people that you can and garbage then becomes not just physical garbage but even mental yeah. garbage spiritual garbage in the form of uh, spurious spirituality garbage yeah, and also the exercise of arbitrary power like the recent thing with this uh, emir of uh, Eloni who banning Who's banned? Who's banned? Traditional heritage. I mean, it's, it's that kind of garbage, that kind of power garbage yeah, that that triggers off symbols like the physical uh, garbage we have to entertain. Garbage impedes. It's not just there. It's not that it's smelly. It actually impedes thinking, the human mind, productivity, creativity. And when you have it exercised by all these toppany monarchs, you know, simply because they have a different structure of spirituality, uh, it, well, as I said at the beginning, I think it's time for another, uh, a genuine um, revolution, but not only in ethics, ethical thinking, but cultural thinking, in which you target people like that. And there's nothing they can do about it. Because the instrument, technology, is at the fingertips of everybody.